on the table and i have my advanced copy a free copy by the way thank you of uh, baba the fifth why baba the fifth is not the fifth <laughs> you know this is very intentional i did that intentionally because i see why and is not uh played with so that they're not so visible but we'll find out from Zaitaba Ole Kanchori because as Miola Moja leader Raila Odinga's chief agent in last year's presidential election Zaitaba Ole Kanchori claims that some key individuals were to blame for Raila Odinga's lost elections in a book he just released Kanchori named former ICT cabinet secretary Joe Musheru former interior principal secretary Dr Karanja Kibicho and former president Uhuru's brother he calls him MK and Professor Makao Mutua as individuals responsible for the laws. Saitabao so claims that uh, the national agents were kept in the dark on what was happening at the Zemio Command Center and that they hardly held planning meetings with the presidential candidate or the running mate. Our senior political affairs reporter Chris Thairu has some of the tidbits from the book. <laughs> Less than seven months after President William Ruto was declared president at the Bomas of Kenya, Azimio leader Raila Odinga's chief agent, Saitabao Kanchuri, has now come out to spill the beans on what transpired before, during, and after the presidential election that saw Raila Odinga lose victory. In his 138-page book titled, Why Baba is Not the Fifth, Kanchori named individuals he claims were responsible for Raila's loss. He says a former ICTCS Joe Musheru, former Interior PS Karanja Kibicho, former President Uru Kenyatta's brother Muhoho Kenyatta, Suna East MP Junet Mohammed, and others leading the Azimio Command Center should own up for the mess that denied Raila Odinga presidential victory. In his book, Kanchori paints a picture of a command center that was flying blind with zero resources, lacking situational awareness, dysfunctional to the core, soaked in clash of ambitions and utterly disunited. He claims that their candidate, Roy Laudinga, did not take particular interest in their activities. Father Kanchori states that the national chief agents team at the command center were kept in the dark and hardly did they have meetings with the candidate. <laughs> Kanchori says that the false belief in deep state made many in Raila Odinga's inner circle to assume many things. <laughs> he says while well, Ruto had entrenched himself in government circles for the last 10 years, Raila's handshake experience gave him only a smattering of the system operations. Like many other top officials in Kenyatta's government, Kanchori adds that Matiangi cared less whether Baba won or lost. It had become clear to most of Uhuru Kenyatta's outgoing government officials that Baba's inner circle was a hard nut to crack. In the book, Kanchori describes President William Ruto as methodical schemer, whom Kenyatta still feared. He describes the fear as the kind that causes one to freeze, or flee, or fight. He says Uhuru controlled a shallow state, not the deep state, which was in able hands of Ruto. He further claims that Royla had a false sense of belief that the former IBC chairman of Ulache Bukati would deliver victory to him. <laughs> On the bomber's debacle, Kanchori says it all began with a delay in receiving results from returning officers. He claims at this time IEBC was taking time to access and gauge the situation, including Azimio's preparedness. Father, he says, by the time he grabbed the microphone on the night of August 13th and announced to the nation that Bomas of Kenya was the scene of crime, they had received numerous reports concerning suspicious activities at Bomas. Chris Dairo, KTN News, Nairobi. All right, uh, Setabao Ole Kanchori's book is out and I have it in my hands. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Wakili, for coming tonight. Actually, thank you told me today you're not a wakili. Me. You are an author. An author, You're yes. a writer. Yes, indeed. Thank you for coming. Let me, let me set the stage. Chris Tairo has done it. But I want to do this by reading the introduction just briefly. This is what you say in the book. This is a true account of how William Ruto beat Raila Odinga through a simple, predictable, predictable, in brackets, 
even foreseeable, right, mm -hmm. uh, stratagem to become the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya. Can we give you a Bible that this account is true? Absolutely. This account is true. Absolutely. You are in the front row Absolutely. of that election. Absolutely. You say, this book is an immortal expression of your deep disappointment at the casual manner in which the Azimio team squandered tremendous goodwill it enjoyed from the greater public. Kenyan public. That's yes. how you say it. Yeah. All right. Do you still believe, do you believe tonight where you're seated as the chief agent of uh, Raila Odinga, that Raila Odinga won the election? Uh, Ken, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. You know, this place is, is, is home, is practically home, and it's always nice to be here. Uh, let, me, let me answer that question in a very simple way. Elections in Kenya are neither won nor lost. They are taken. It's in the book. Elections in Kenya are not won. They are not lost. They are taken. And to answer your question deliberately, um, Baba gave it away. He won, yes, but he gave it away. Okay. Because elections are not won or lost in Kenya. They are taken. So for you to, to be president, and I'm talking about presidential elections, not necessarily other elections, but presidential elections are therefore the ones who are prepared to take, to take it. Okay. There has not been an, an election in this country, I think, for nearly 20 years that has been won. All of them have been taken. Have been taken. Yeah. There's a lot of things that we're going to discuss also in the next hour in this book, but I want to pick a few right now because I want to start from uh, where you were involved mm -hmm. because I need to know your role and if you think you take any blame for what happened in this election as a chief agent. So, I mean, um, I have said in the book that given my prominent role in the whole um, affair, I cannot extricate myself entirely from blame. I have, you know, come out to say I cannot extricate myself entirely from blame. However, um, I was not the candidate. And I have also indicated um, my initiative and my effort to salvage the situation, but it was not to be. And, and so uh, the book answers what role I played. I, I think if I had been given um, a bit of a more of a free hand and better confidence in terms of um, being allowed to carry my roles, uh, you know, as, as a chief agent, I would have delivered Baba to State House. I have said in the book, you know, practically everything I told Baba before the elections, everything came to pass. Came to pass. Okay. Everything. It was as if I was predicting, you know, the events before they happened. And he knows it. One of the things that is in this book that I read today is you sort of predicted where we'll end with this election. Mm -hmm. You released the book yesterday, so you, have, you would have not seen how it will end with this dialogue process. Mm -hmm. What was your concern then, and what is your concern right now with the way politics are being run in this country? Um, you know, I have described this as, as a game, you know, that is being played at a high level but which has no end, you know, in, you know, in terms of really an end game, you know, of the game. It is, um, I, I had uh, seen it even before the, the, the man, the man began. Mm -hmm. I, I said it on Twitter that there is no end game for this man, the man. And you see, the, the knee-jerk reaction that has been called the Easter deal, yeah, it was a knee-jerk reaction. And, and I can tell you, Ken, mm -hmm. um, this is a, is a situation whereby very um, prominent parties in the whole affair are practically building the ship as they sail, so to speak. They really don't have where they're going. They're building the ship as they sail, as they sail. And if they drown along the way, then it will not be an accident because if you build a ship as you sail, it, that is not really uh, the way to... You, you, they didn't have a plan. In other words, you're saying there was no plan to win this election from your team. Uh, no, I'm talking about the dialogue. I'm talking about the dialogue. Oh, the point. dialogue, right. Yeah, I was just okay. answering your question on okay. the dialogue. Mm -hmm. So, um, as you know, insofar as the, the election is concerned, I mean, it's all in black and white in the book. Yep. Um, for you to win a uh, presidential election in Kenya, you need serious organization. You need serious systems. And you also must... Um, put, you know, systems in place to prevent fraud, electoral fraud. You cannot expect electoral fraud, you know, um, you cannot hope 
wish and pray, you know, that there will be no electoral fraud. Because it has, you know, experience has shown us that, um, you know, it is basically the norm as, a, you know, as, as opposed to the exception. So you must go to the election knowing that it will be stolen. So you, you go to the election knowing that, you know, I'll do everything in stop my them. power mm -hmm. to stop the theft. But if you go to an election hoping and praying that it will be okay, you, you basically, uh, you know, that's wishful thinking. You have talked about the goodwill and this election was for Raila Odinga to lose. But uh, you have also done quite a number of uh, names dropping. And some of the people that you have mentioned in your book um, are former ICT, CS Josh, uh, Joe Musheru, former Interior PS Karanja Kibito, former President Uhuru Kenyatta's brother, Mohawo Kenyatta, Suna East MP, Junet Mohammed, and others. And I'd like to get a quote from... What you say in your book, you say, instead of uh, taking responsibility and publicly apologizing to Mr. Odinga and his supporters, some of them are still milling around Baba and acting as if nothing happened. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, the election, the presidential election of 2022, I've called it a tragic comedy because it was really a tragic comedy. It was a tragic comedy in the sense that to most Kenyans who supported Azimio, you know, the heartbreak that it caused them was a tragedy. Uh, but like William Shakespeare said, you know, everything is, uh, you know, is a tragedy in short sight. But with hindsight, most things are comic. So when you look at it with the benefit of hindsight, it, 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 it is almost comical. Uh, I like the way you have interpreted the book because, you know, like every good read, everybody will have their own interpretation. Um, I would say, you know, uh, some of the people you have ascribed blame, I haven't necessarily ascribed bl uh, blame to them. I would say, for example, I was, I, I've, said, I've said very clearly in the book, uh, people like Muho Kenyatta, yeah. I was very convinced that uh, he meant well. Yeah. And um, you described him as a brilliant fellow. A very brilliant, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a decent human being, a very good man. Um, but I will never understand, you know, and I've said it in the book. Yes. Um, how he watched the whole command center, which was practically in his control. In your words, how he was fooled? He was fooled. Yes. He was fooled. And um, people, the people who have said uh, it was a long con, I do not believe it was a long con. But uh, for someone as brilliant as Moho Kenyatta mm -hmm. to have swallowed, uh, you know, lies and, and, and uh, bait uh, and, you know, been fooled by, um, you know, other players. Uh, it's a matter that is confounding, to say the least. Okay, they'll read more about Muhao Kenyatta. <laughs> but I want, to, I want to pick something else, because you painted a picture of a, a center, that's the command center now that you talk about Muhao Kenyatta, mm. that was uh, flying blind with zero resources, right? And you say it lacks situation awareness, situational awareness, dysfunctional to the core, soaked in a uh, clash of ambition and utterly... Um, disunited, the candidates did not take particular interest in the activities. I'll do the quote now. You would be shocked to learn that not once did Baba or Martha personally join our deliberations, whether as national chief agents team at the command center or even called to inquire the progress. The only time you came to sit down with Baba and Martha, you say, was at the Supreme, during the Supreme Court process. Absolutely. And that's a fact. You know, on the issue of uh, agents management, let me, let me, let me just, uh, you know, clarify something you've said. Mm -hmm. It's not that the command center was not given resources, okay? The command center had resources, but the, the team, the national chief agents team, you remember we, ha the, the, we, we had a team of five. Mm -hmm. Myself as national chief agent, Odua uh, Dr. Caroline Karugo, uh, Professor Isaiah Wakindiki, um, and Paul Mwangi. We were the national chief agents team. That team was kept out of the command center. And we were basically, uh, you know, the command center was hijacked by the players that, some of the players that you've mentioned. Yeah. And um, they had resources. They were flying in resources, crazy resources. I've said in the book, yeah. you know, there was, the, the resources had been put by Amohawa Kenyatta. They were, the resources had been you know, mm. put in place. And mm. in fact, there was um, a push and pull between those players you know, on who will control those resources. And so um, the resources were there, but they were not applied to, the, to, to good effect. Okay. Because it's not what you have, it is how you use it. So um, the resources were not, were not properly applied. 
and the people who are running the command center were not interested in securing the election. Okay. They were interested in other things which I've described in the in book. In the book. Yeah. All right, there's a lot to talk about, but first we have to take a break. Absolutely.